Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehra Bagga and today I'll be taking you through one of the interesting chess games that was played in 2017. Now this was between Magnus Carlsen, the world champion who has been holding this title from 2013 now against Vishwanathan Anand who happens to have his birth on December 11 and he is a famous grandmaster from India, India's first actually and the five-time world chess champion as well. So we thought of paying him a small tribute by covering up all of his best matches uh, the entire week. And if you haven't checked those out, I request you to do so. So I'll place the link in the description below as well as on the top so that you can check those as, as well. Now this one holds a lot of more significance, especially for all the Vichy Anand fans. So yeah, if you are a true Vichy Anand fan, you will definitely watch it till the end. Now before we start with the game, I request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily without a miss. So this was the last time ever that Vichy Anand defeated Magnus Carlsen. And that's why I was saying if you're a true Vichy Anand fan, you will definitely watch this game till the end. So let's begin with the game. It started off with d4. Anand responds with knight f6. Magnus plays a pawn to c4, just trying to go for the big center, getting his uh, queens active as well maybe. Sometime soon, bishop can also be developed, so not playing pawn to e3, which blocks the bishop's diagonal. Here, Anand goes slow with pawn to e6, preparing for d5 maybe. And here, Magnus responds with knight to c3. And Anand brings his bishop on b4. Now, this is the Nimzo Indian attack, uh, which Anand has mastered over the years. Just trying to pin the knight for now. And then maybe just get the knight out, play pawn forward to d5, castle on the king's side, and then maybe attack uh, from both the sides. Here, uh, Magnus plays e3, and Anand castles quickly, just trying to make sure that there is a good development early. The king is pretty much safe, and then you can probably go for the attack as well. Here, uh, Carlsen plays bishop d3, trying to de develop the bishop, eyeing the king's diagonal already and maybe with the ideas of getting queen on c3 as well. So the battery will be nice once the knight gets deflected from here. And now d5 finally by Anand going for the center. Pawn to uh, a3 by Carlsen, trying to just kick this bishop away. And uh, Anand takes on the knight, which was the best move as well, because the retrieving can be bad. The pawns can be pushed forward, and then you will can end up by getting your uh, bishop trapped as well. We just quickly see what would have happened if I have placed his bishop backwards. So the pawn comes ahead. And if you now try to save it, and then the pawn moves forward and then the bishop is trapped. So that can also happen. So just try to be a bit precise before playing it backwards. So you can take the knight always. And that was the best move. And Anand does take that. Here, Carlson takes back uh, with the pawn on b file. And now uh, Anand takes back the pawn on c file by from the pawn on d5. So uh, Carlson takes back with bishop and now pawn to c5 by Anand. Now he's just trying to open up the uh, center here. If now uh, Carlson takes back, uh, Anand gets to take the queen and then the king will be in the center and he has lost the castling rights. Whereas Anand's development is better, the king is safer. Rook is going to come up very shortly on the d5 attacking the king. Bishop can be developed, knight can be developed. So, here, Anand will be leading this game, and that's why 1.3, the evaluation already. So let's go back in the game, uh, where after pawn forward was played uh, on c5, uh, Carlsen develops the knight on f3. Queen to c7 by Anand here, and bishop goes back, uh, trying to just make sure uh, that the bishop is safer, and there's no uh, tricks happening with the knight maybe later on. Uh, and we are not even trying to push our pawns forward, getting the bishop go back. Bishop also is nice over there on e2, defending the knight sometime as well, just in case it's required and the pawn structure is not spoiled. So here b6 by Anand, and Carlsen plays bishop on b2. Now he could have got his bishop over to d5 as well, but why didn't he? Let's try and understand, because this also blocks the queen's path, and see, it gives evaluation to the black side that you are an advantage. Because after we free and care of the bishop, we are going to take on the knight as well, maybe. Uh, maybe develop the knight first and get the rook centralized. And queen becomes more inactive there by the bishop. So bishop development was better on b2, and that's what Carlton does. 
now bishop to b7 by anand and carlson castles here knight to uh, d7 by anand and pawn forward c4 by magnus here rook to c8 now both the players are trying to improve position of their pieces and that's why rook to c1 by magnus as well just getting both the rooks aligned in front of each other trying to centralize pieces so that if once the the file gets opened up this can have a good impact on the game and some uh, one of them gets to have the advantage so the c file is one important file in the game which generally gets opened up when uh, the opponent has castle on the king side especially when we are playing from black here uh, rook to uh, d8 just trying to centralize the other rook as well getting it, it into activity eyeing in front of the queen so that now if pawn takes once you take back with the knight your queen the opponent's queen will be attacked so this can be one of the sequence where pawn takes and knight takes and suddenly you have an open file control which is very nice uh, in these kind of games and you just certainly gain advantage by just a small move like that let's go back in the game where i'm where carlson plays queen to a b3 here so the game is pretty much neutral throughout so far it's move number 15 and both the grandmasters are hanging on to it now the idea behind queen uh, to b3 was simple because you have placed the rook uh, he doesn't want any for, uh, tactics there that he has to move his queen later on so he's just trying to develop his queen maybe get the rook now on to d1 so that rook exchange also happens once pawns are ex exchanged there here uh, anand plays knight to g4 now this is always nice because you are just trying to take uh, the bishop next the uh, the knight next with the bishop because uh, see a passive move here by carlson can lead uh, to a very bad mistake which is knight takes and now you have to play pawn forward here otherwise that's checkmate because the queen is very nicely placed on c7 and the game can quickly ends and these kind of mistakes don't happen in the grandmaster level but uh, definitely it can happen to anyone so just be prepared of this diagonal as well once whenever the queen is on c7 so here after knight goes there on g4 pawn to g3 by anand making sure that there are no tactics involved uh, and uh, here knight goes back did he take back the knight after placing there yeah he, he got his knight back on g6 and wants to maybe centralize the knight now on e4 and then maybe uh, plan to have a fork as well maybe take on the knight and then go for the fork so there can be some plans around it and here uh, rook to d1 uh, by uh, magnus and then knight goes in the center and of course you cannot have a fork here because the knight is controlling it yes the knights can be exchanged and that can be one possibility but here magnus goes with knight to e1 uh, and instead of going uh, for attacking the queen it doesn't help because now the rook is there so you cannot have a fork uh, so that's why the knight is pretty much uh, good there though and can be both the knights can be connected now but uh, magnus choose uh, Arun chooses a better option he goes with knight to d6 now why is it better you're just trying to maybe double up have a lot of pieces here on the d file so basically you're trying to control it further maybe go for bishop exchange later on uh, as well once the bishop gets lined up because then knight takes back as well that can be one tactic here because light square bishop is not that an important piece uh, for black as it is for white that is one of the defenders and if you see slowly magnus has removed all his defenders to attackers now uh, the defenders could have been on the f3 as well as uh, g2 which have now been moved uh, to e2 as well as uh, on e1 here pawn forward by Magnus on d5 and it takes with the pawn which gets taken back again with the c pawn and now pawn forward uh, by uh, Anand here placing it on c4 uh, of course the exchange doesn't work here because if you take with the bishop you get to lose a piece eventually in the process because after takes uh, you will be having a piece down so that doesn't work and it's six almost six in favor of black and that will be a definite win so the pawn cannot be captured here and after that uh, what uh, since the queen was under attack queen has to be saved and yes queen on uh, c3 can be a good move that's eyeing the checkmate but of course uh, anand would have seen that so magnus didn't want to play it that straight he rather goes with queen on c2 here now pawn to b5 by anand magnus goes knight to g2 
now the diner is also closed, so you cannot really take the knight as well. So uh, now uh, Anand improves the position of his knight by placing it on c5. And now knight to f4 by Magnus. Queen comes on e7, trying to improvise the position of the queen now. And see, it's a small buildup. Uh, if you see, bishop is always opening up. Uh, he, Anand got to open up the diagonal by placing his knight there first. So uh, on, on uh, g4 early in the game, so that pawn forward was played. Otherwise, there were some tactics involved with queen and bishop eyeing that diagonal. And now he's just trying to maneuver his pieces in a better way. Now, queen on e7 generally means that you are going to plan of uh, having a plan of placing a queen on e4 sometime. Uh, of course, not when queen, opponent's queen is there. And then once this diagonal gets opened up, you're trying to go for a quick checkmate. That is generally the diagonal when a uh, bishop is on b7. So you have to be prepared for that here. And if you see, uh, Magnus has uh, got some advantage now uh, of 0.9 as per the computer analysis. So that can be one trouble as well for Anand going forward. But then bishop to g4 uh, played by Magnus trying to tank the rook, maybe trying to get more control of the c file uh, by pushing the opponent's uh, rook on over to b file. Or a rook lift can also happen, which uh, sort of weakens up your last rank, uh, which is not being... Actually, uh, there's last rank weakness here as well, if once the rook uh, can be taken, because all the pawns are blocking the king's way of saving himself upwards. So there can be a last rank weakness. So that's what uh, eventually uh, Magnus plans uh, to have uh, for Anand. And now rook to c7, uh, trying to just uh, save the rook there. Uh, and then queen finally on c3, eyeing the right diagonal, preparing for a checkmate, which of course Anand sees, uh, and plays pawn forward on f5. Now that's defense and attack at the same time, uh, because you're attacking the bishop, and that's a discovered defense as well with the queen. So that's a nice move there by Anand. And now uh, bishop goes back on f3, the right diagonal as well. And here, finally, uh, both the rooks get double, doubled up on the d file. Uh, queen comes on b4 and knight to b3 by Anand here. Just trying to improve his knight's positions. Slowly and gradually as went uh, to the opponent's court. The pawn structure is also nice and maybe irritating as well for Magnus. But yes, you are trying to gain space on the queen side after casting on the king's side. And that's what uh, Magna, uh, Anand's style of playing uh, playing style has been throughout these years. And then knight comes on e6. Uh, and leaving the rook behind, so because even Magnus can take that. And that's what happens. He takes the knight first, hoping to take on the rook next. Knight goes back here. And pawn, uh, Magnus takes on uh, the pawn first on b5. And then uh, rook takes on d5. Bishop takes rook. A rook takes bishop, and certainly we have a position where it's again equal after 30 second move. Now, how close a game can be? 32 moves, and there is no improvement in anyone's position. Again, we are back to square one. Here, knight comes on d6, trying to improve the position of knight, not willing to exchange queens. And here, uh, may, uh, Carlson makes a final blunder. That was knight to c5. He's trying to exchange uh, the bishop there. But what happens next is amazing. Anand takes on uh, the knight with the rook. And after Carlson takes back with the queen, he misses the fact that the bishop was always on b7. And the main idea there was queen to e5, e4. Now the diagonal is pretty much strong. And there's no way that you can save this game. Let's say uh, you can save the checkmate for once. That by not letting the queen come on g2. Either you can play pawn forward and lose the pawn and then still something like that can happen over the time. Or you can just move the king. But then again, a check from h1 would mean that you will lose the rook. Uh, so this can definitely happen. Oh, not exactly like this, but you first need to give another check and push your opponent down. And once he goes there, you go ahead with the knight and then, okay, this looks bad. That's a nasty folk. Uh, and you, once you move, uh, you can even take the rook first so that... Then it's a check, uh, takes back with the bishop, and you can take on with the knight, and you are, again, going to have a massive lead in this game. So things like that uh, can quickly change after you give a further check. Uh, and here, just take on the queen eventually. 
So that could have been a pretty easy win from there on. And Magnus sees that. And that's why as soon as uh, Queen comes over to e4, Magnus resigns, understanding the threat that he cannot save this game. Now, this was the last time uh, Vichy Anand defeated Magnus Carlsen. And I love this game for sure. Because the plan was simple, not trying to gain serious advantage in the beginning, but just putting your king on safety first, then slowly maneuvering your knight over to the open side. Uh, we saw the uh, nice maneuvering by uh, uh, Anand there, taking on the rook with the knight, and then smartly getting his queen active on e4. He was just waiting for this diagonal to get opened up. That's why bishop to b7 was always dangerous. And the way he opened up the opponent's king's uh, diagonal as well was also smart by getting his knight on g4 initially. So an interesting pattern, a combination of uh, a lot of moves that led to downfall of Carlsen eventually in this game. I hope you liked the video. Do let me know your feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by now. And thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.